some of you guys might actually remember taking this stuff on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. It all starts back in 1873. Alfred Bound Scott, born in 1846, sets off for New York City with his business partner, Samuel Wood Bound, born in 1842. Isn't that peculiar though? I thought that was a typo that they both have Bound in their name. And is it Bound or Bone? I'm going with Bound. Anyways, they were in search of a new preparation method that will give cod liver oil a more agreeable taste. People had been using it for centuries, but it tasted horrible, and these guys saw an opportunity to improve it. They began experimenting and invented the first emulsified version of cod liver oil, which wasn't done before, and it was an interesting take on the classic cod liver oil. To emulsify something, it means that you are mixing two liquids together that normally can't be combined. Combining oil and water is a classic example. Emulsifying is done by slowly adding one ingredient to another while rapidly mixing. This disperses and suspends tiny droplets of one liquid through another. So they called it Scott's Emulsion. During the 1890s, the business was expanded across the Americas, Europe, Asia, and eventually everywhere. By the time Bound died in 1910, he was running the business from 409 Pearl Street in New York City. And if the numbering is the same, it would be one of these buildings. While Scott had moved to London and ran the balance of the business from there at 31 Snow Hill, London. And if the numbering is the same, it would be this building. So here's the process of making cod liver oil in the late 1800s. First, codfish are imported from Norway. You cut out the livers and the gallbladders, you throw them into barrels, and you let them decompose. Doesn't this look yummy? The oils are periodically skimmed off the top. Fishermen often applied heat to extract the last bits of oil from the smelly, decaying mass. The oil grew darker during the rotting process, resulting in three grades, pale, light brown, and dark brown. A pharmacist in 1895 wrote, quote, In those days, cod liver oil was not a desirable article of consumption. Indeed, to put the matter plainly, it was an abomination, and no one could have taken it willingly, even once, not to speak of day after day, month after month. Nevertheless, many people did take it, and the only reasonable explanation is that the oil must have given strikingly favorable results. Scott and Bound published their formula in early advertising, 50% pure cod liver oil, 6 grams of the hypophosphate of lime and 3 grams of the hypophosphate of soda to each fluid ounce, which were both used in the prevention of diseases. And then there's a little glycerin in there. This little clip from a six-page ad in McClure magazine from 1895 proclaims, You do not get the taste at all because the little drops of oil are covered in glycerin just as pills are covered with sugar or gelatin. As palatable as milk became the key slogan in Scott's advertising. Around 1917, the business was producing 1.5 million bottles of Scott's Emulsion each year. There were 50 cent and $1 sizes. The success of their preparations is largely due to the ingenious and lavish advertising, such as the six-page ad in magazines. At the top of their game, they were spending a half a million a year on advertising alone. The man with the fish on his back first appeared on Scott's Emulsion back in 1884, which is about 10 years after they were in business. And it became Scott and Bound's trademark in 1890. Scott was on a business trip in Norway when he saw a fisherman with a record-breaking 156 pound codfish. 
That's what it says under this picture here. Scott had a photographer snap his picture and that picture became their trademark. By 1900, the man with the fish was famous. His image was engraved and embossed on boxes and bottles, on advertising, trade cards, booklets, posters, and was distributed throughout the world. And one time, the company had an 84 foot high painting of the fisherman on the side of the Scott and Bound building in Lower Manhattan and illuminated the entire area so that it could be seen day and night. Only I couldn't find any pictures of it though. Bummer. Consumption, which is what they called tuberculosis back then. It was called consumption because it would consume you from within. It was a leading cause of death in the 1800s. Well, Scott's liver oil had a reputation as an effective treatment for consumption, and that helped lead to its popularity. In that six-page ad that I was talking about before, Scott and Bound recognized the role of microorganisms in diseases, and they explained that the cause of consumption is a growing germ that destroys the lungs the same way a growing germ causes the molding of cheese. As they explained, the germ itself is harmless unless it finds some smothered, starved, or tired spot within the body to grow. Rickets is another problem during that time. Rickets was a vitamin D deficiency, which distorted the bones, usually resulting in children having bowed legs, some bowed inwards and some bowed outwards. Scott's advertised its power to nourish the body and build up resistance. With Scott's emulsion, the thin and frail become plump and robust, and it was proudly proclaimed the great flesh producer. A lot of research had been done in the early 20s on the benefits of vitamins and how they affect the body. Neither Scott nor Bound lived to see the age of vitamins, which became the new wonder drugs. They died in 1908 and 1910. But once it was discovered that their cod liver oil was high in vitamins A and D and omega-3 fatty acids, it didn't take long for the company to capitalize on this discovery and build it into their advertising. Health professionals would urge mothers to give it to their children daily. The recommended dosage, adults and children, one tablespoon two to three times daily after meals. It was suggested for children to take it with some preserves, fruit, a biscuit, or a drop of wine. For adults, the oil was mixed into coffee, milk, or brandy. Interesting fun fact, <laughs> those with an unsurmountable aversion to the taste could take the oil by enema. Hmm, no thanks. Pamphlets on infant care issued by the U.S. Children's Bureau demonstrated the proper method of administering the oil to babies, as demonstrated by this mom. You force feed and you squeeze the baby's cheeks together to prevent them from spitting it out. <laughs> About 140 years later, you can still buy it. And Scott's message remains the same. The emulsion helps build up the body's natural resistance to infections and develop strong bones and teeth. My bottle has a maker's mark that was used during the 1920s. It's got the embossing of the guy and the fish. And I'm telling you what, I'm not in a hurry to try this stuff. I'm sure it tastes much better than it did a hundred years ago, but still, no thanks. That's it for today. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.